we go take two. Take two. All good. Lewis FC documentary, Rianne Cleverly, take two. I found this quote and I think it just sums up the club really well. Purpose is that feeling that you are part of something bigger than yourself, that you are needed, appreciated, and that you have something better ahead to work for. Purpose is what creates true happiness. Purpose is what Lewis FC is all about. Football is for all and the belonging in that inclusion, all those kind of buzzwords, this is the reality of it. This is a movement that we want to start here at Little Lewis. There's so much more than just football and they're using football to spread awareness and change the world. Me coming from big cities like Mumbai and then London, I was scared about moving into a small town like Lewis where everyone knows everyone and what's happening. But even in my first season, I've just fit right in. It feels like I've been here for ages. So I grew up in a family which was all about equality between male and female cousins. But when I moved to the UK and met my friend who plays football, she sort of got me to understand that there is a big disparity in women's football and women are not getting equal rights and treatment. I made sure that I would use all my energy resources to work towards bringing that equality in women's football. And that's why I sort of found my way in Lewis. It's impossible really to separate out the football club from the town. They are so interlinked. Lewis as a town has a really unique personality. It has a spirit of independence and rebellion in it. A lot of people obviously haven't heard of it, a little town on the, the south coast, but the more you get to know about this place, the more you just love it. Lewis is a very quirky town. It's a unique town. It is most famous for its bonfire celebrations. Probably the biggest bonfire night in the world. Three or four times the number of people that make up the population of the town come out in the town with fire and they just go a little bit crazy. Honestly, a town with a lot going on, a lot of spark, a lot of energy, a lot of passion and a lot of people who really care about the things that they're into. It's hard to say what's responsible for the rebellious nature in the town. We were home to Tom Paine, who wrote The Rights of Man. He started his rabble-rousing in Lewis before going over to America. That spirit of challenging the status quo has been baked into the town for, for decades, really. And you can feel that when you walk around the town. You can feel that there is an energy which is pretty special. I love football and I hate it. And the thing I hate about football is the injustice, is the inequality. What we wanted to create with Lewis Football Club was a vehicle to not just say that's really bad, but to actually do it differently and then see how it went. In the 2007-08 season, that was when the global financial crisis was hitting and the owners of the football club were starting to feel the pinch from that. We formed this group called Rooks125 in 2009. And at that point, we devised a plan to try and, in effect, help to save the football club. We wrote a, an 18-page manifesto. We went out, talked to loads of people, tried to raise money. Ultimately, Cotton Story Short were very successful. And then a group of six of us, on July the 8th, 2010, we bought the club for one pound off the existing owners. We're attracting people who aren't even necessarily football fans, and that's because the principles of the club from day one are about how do we use football as an engine for social good. If you want to run a successful club or a successful company, you want all the right people on the bus and in the right seats. 
Well, this bus has picked up some absolutely incredible people along the way. But the fact that we have attracted, I'm not going to say someone like Maggie, the fact that we've attracted Maggie is, in, to me, the, the greatest evidence that we're doing something right. Maggie Murphy, superstar name, superstar hair, yeah, superstar person. This club wouldn't be where it was if it wasn't for Maggie. I've always had a bit of a special place in my heart for Lewis FC. My first ever game in adult football was here at the Dripping Pan. Maggie went to Oxford University and she was actually captain of the Oxford women's football team. She is fiercely intelligent. I mean, she is on the ball and that's exactly what we need. I'd already become a little bit more radicalised myself in terms of what I wanted for the future of women's football. And I was doing that through an organisation that I helped set up called Equal Playing Field. My path started crossing with Lewis and it was in early 2019 when they asked if I'd be interested in coming on board as the general manager to oversee the women's side of the club. This is the changing the system from the inside. Can you do it? Put your money where your mouth is. Can you help to create a well-run club that is as excited about women playing as they are about men playing? Can you create that club which is ethically run that manages its resources well, can it be transparent, can it be open, can it have integrity, can it do the right thing? And I guess that's a challenge that I thought was too exciting to, to not take on. I think Lewis Football Club is really known for two things. One is our stance on gender equality, which is radical and unfortunately still pioneering. And the other one is really the fact that we have this spirit and desire for change and that we're disruptors. One of the challenges with football in general in this country is that it is so ingrained in our cultural life. To move that ship a little bit from where it's come from is really, really challenging. We want change in the way football is run and governed, change in terms of the inclusivity of culture, change in the fact that there's gamification of football. There's so much that people don't like about football. Let's just figure out if we can take them apart and put it together again in a, in a different way. And Lewis is special because it chose to do that through its ownership, because it took this decision to remember its purpose. Like, what is the point of a football club? Yeah, it's to win games, but it's also to give some kind of value to its communities. And so by doing something different, by sparking off a movement by saying, actually, we don't need to run it the way it's always been run. We can do it differently. We can make it genuinely a sport for everyone, run it better, learn from the mistakes in the past. We can be more ethical, we can be more transparent. And I think that the club choosing to recognise that it serves as well as is served by, I think that was really important. And that's one of the reasons it's, it's so special and, and is that shining light, corny as it seems, for people like me that were wanting a better type of football. Sometimes I don't think people understand just how special the club is, including people that maybe have always had it on their doorstep. I think with any town, people long to belong, don't they? And with the football club, we provide a place where you can belong as a community. 20 minutes then, let's go. I've been fortunate to work in football around the world, but there is no more special place to be right now in my life than here at Lewis FC. Action. <laughs> my name is Kelly Lindsay, and I'm the head of performance for Lewis FC. My career in football has been completely unexpected. <laughs> for a kid from Nebraska, I never imagined I would do what I've done in football. I started in the U.S. as a college coach, as many of us did in the U.S. That led me to Afghanistan, where I was the Afghanistan women's national team coach, and ultimately to Morocco, where I was the head of women's football, trying to develop women's football across the country, and also the women's national team coach, and ultimately here to Lewis FC and uh, beautiful Lewis, England. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a special place because they're redefining, I think, what football can mean in society. And they really want to make sure that everybody here, the players, male, female, youth, senior, the staff, we want to make sure that everyone is taken care of, truly supported on and off the pitch, in and out of the office, football's equal, Humans are equal, and I get to be my 100% complete, unique self. And there's no better place to work than when you get to be 100% you.
soon as I opened my mind to different cultures, the thing I noticed first was women are consistently around the world treated as second or even third class citizens. Some of them with absolutely no opportunity and people almost being proud to hold women back versus proud to champion them forward. And that was really a trigger in my life to say, we must do something. First of all, I'm grateful to be with you tonight because you are the people that will transform the world. As soon as you see the connection between the women in a first world country playing and fighting for equal pay and equal rights and an equal voice, and then you see women in another country just fighting to walk on the street, not being called a prostitute, not having stones thrown at them. I think when you put that connection together, that's what we're trying to transform through sport. If it happens on the football pitch in one country, it can happen anywhere in the world and women can be seen as equal from here on out. You want your daughter to be a CEO? Yes. And an entrepreneur and make big, big, big money? Yes, yes, yes. Then let her play football because the first time she sits in that board meeting, if she talks the language of football, every man in that board meeting will respect her. When you can talk football, when you can talk sport, when you can talk humanity, we can break boundaries down. So let her play sport, let her have a team, let her talk about Arsenal or Man City or Man U or Lewis FC. The club is, is genuinely like, it's a special, special place and there's not really many of those in football. Everything they've done for me and every other player is, is helping us grow and grow the game, not just as individuals now, but for the girls that are growing up like underneath us. Get your bums, grab your friends, and get to the field and get to the game. Because it does matter. It absolutely matters that you're there and you're cheering. If you hate football, hate football, but don't hate what these girls are doing. I just think in 2022, how are we still in a point that we're questioning if one human being and another are equal? Whether that's gender, whether that's race, whether that's what passport you have, like it's 2022, we are all equal. And if Afghanistan and Ukraine and all these things in the world haven't taught us that, we have a lot to learn about humanity and we all need to take a, a reflection on who we are as a human, not to treat each other equally at this point. This is a club that likes to do things differently. And I think I like to, to do things differently as well. I like to be a bit unique in, in <laughs> in, my, in my path and in my activities. I don't know if many, many others would, would kind of want to do this like pre-game, but <laughs> spoke to the, to the owners and I said, look, you know, if you've got any space within the grounds that I could set up a, a community garden, then I'd love to be able to do that. Anything that we grow goes towards match day foods, any waste that comes from that, again, comes back into the compost which thing gets used. That's always been the idea, make this environment as sustainable as possible. A lot of footballers aren't necessarily against change. It's just finding the right situation where they can. You almost need a club to set the standard because a lot of footballers or a lot of sports people in general get discouraged, I guess, from, from saying anything because you're told, you know, just, just play your sport and uh, stop interfering in, uh, <laughs> in, in societal issues. But this place is different, all right? This place kind of encourages that. None of these things happen in a vacuum. There's a lot of work to be done to lay the foundations for each stage of the work we're doing here at Lewis Football Club on and off the pitch. The more we can prove this concept by being successful on the pitch, the bigger the platform we have for our off-pitch messages.
read it out so that you can read it. In my magazine this morning, it's all about Crystal Palace. Like when you used to go as a, a young boy. I've done what I've wanted to do in football. Growing up as a child, I wanted to become a professional footballer and I've done that. So I'm kind of everything that I'm living now through football is a, is a bonus. So it just feels like I can give something back by telling my story. And, and that, that would be enough for me if, you know, if one person turned around and said, you know, it, it's helped me on the right path. That would be enough for me. So, yeah. Well, I keep back. Cheers, Cheers. Someone just waiting for you for the <laughs> I'm a recovering gambling addict. At 18, I started gambling as I was a first year pro at Bristol City and really used it as a complete escape. I was under like extreme pressure and anxiety from being a young professional footballer. I went through two to two and a half years of, you know, every penny I had went into the casino, into, you know, betting shops. It left me at a place where I was either going to end up in prison or I was going to end up as a statistic as a male suicide because I couldn't cope with you know, where my life was going. One of the, the issues that we've taken a stance on has been this increasing amount of gambling, advertising and sponsorship in football. Only 10 years ago, you didn't see that much gambling advertising in football, but, but roll on today and more than half of the Premier League teams have a gambling sponsor on the front of their shirt, let alone in the stands. Someone said to me, in the last 20 years, no one's seen a cigarette advert, but everyone knows where to buy a packet of cigarettes. You know, it's the same with gambling. Everyone knows where to put a bet on but it's being pushed in the face of men, women, boys, girls. We understand that there's a big, strong link between football and the visibility of gambling advertising, because it's not just in the ground and it's not just on the shirt. It also transfers into the computer games that, that kids play as well. So we now have a large number of children aged between 14 and 18 who have become gambling addicts in this country. You get young boys and girls that go to the games and watch it on TV and they think these products are safe. In fact, it's not that, you know, it's, these products are highly addictive. They're like alcohol and drugs. When we were approached by a gambling company to sponsor us, because we knew about the impact of, of gambling sponsorship and because we have these principles and values as a club, it was very easy for us to say, no, we're not, we're not going to take that money. We didn't just decline it. We went out to a local gambling charity called Gambling With Lives. And then we've started fundraising for them and, and collaborating with them and helping them with their projects. It can be really difficult to take those principled stances and a principle isn't really a principle until it costs you. And it costs us financially, but it costs us every day because we have to go into battle with the league that might be sponsored by a gambling company that wants us to display logos around our ground that we've said is gambling free. It was also our biggest ever sponsorship offer that we've ever received. We don't want to kind of roll over. This isn't about accepting the status quo. It's about trying to do football differently and be more thoughtful and intentional about every aspect of it. People love sport and love football because of the way it makes them feel. It's a passion, it's an energy. They, maybe they feel they can be themselves. When that gets destroyed with certain money, are we really doing what we said we were gonna do for humanity and, and through sport? Sometimes we've had people say that we are a gimmicky club. That I find really funny in a way because we are so far from being gimmicky. Naturally, if you, you do something that is going to change the norms and shakes it up a little bit, people are going to question it. And I can't remember who said it, some famous person, but like, first they'll laugh at you, then they'll like question you and then, then they'll join you. Externally, I think that a lot of people are curious. We certainly get a lot more clubs from overseas asking us about it. The truth of the matter is around the world, not many clubs have all the money in the world. So there's a million excuses out there for not being able to do it right, not being able to do it well. So if we can go on the journey and prove to people that with less you can do more, you can overachieve, you can punch above your weight, then I hope it's the message to clubs around the world that you don't have to take that money either. You don't have to do unethical things because oftentimes integrity goes left or right when money comes into place. We came into this season really feeling everyone going for the gold, everyone going for promotion. So on our women's side, we're in the championship, which is the second tier, and we really wanted to promote into the WSL. And on our men's side, we're tier seven. We're in the Ishmian Premier League, and we really wanted to promote into the National League South. And I think what's special about either one is whichever team promotes will raise the other one with them. And I think that's the really unique thing about our club is we can celebrate each other and support each other and drive each other because we know whichever team promotes, whatever sponsors come along, it's split equally. 
So thus, both teams will rise together. And, and that's the most powerful thing you can do at a club is actually be one club, actually share resources, actually support each other, and actually make sure that anything that comes in raises our entire club together. Duffy, don't get bored of keep switching the ball. Even if we switch the ball, suck them away when we go back out the same way. Just keep pounding it. Make them work. People don't want to run after the ball. Let's go, play, play, spot it. Good, movement. As a football manager, you just win football matches and you just get three points, where when you come to Lewis, you don't just do that. Like, you know, I can be part of something that's to change mentalities and, and, and opinions and open awareness up. So it's quite unusual for a non-league manager to be in a position to do that. Play on, play on, dodgy liner. Yes, classy, hold. Right, OK, listen, listen, listen. Realistic for Saturday, that ball into midfield is going to be really hard, Jay. Me as a person, I've always been at other clubs and maybe not quite fitted in because I won't run with the crowd. So if everyone's saying something, if I didn't agree with it, I'll just say, no, I don't agree with that. And Lewis is exactly the same. You know, if everyone's picking on someone or shouting because of something about that person, they wouldn't join in, nor would I. We had a game this season where one of the players heard the fans saying so homophobic, so he just went and spoke to the referee and just said, no, no, I'm not having that. And pointed them out to the stewards. We just stopped the whole game. No, we just stopped the whole game. We encourage it. We encourage boys to do that. To hear or see anything they're not happy with, flag it and we'll just stop. Simple as that. There he goes, the old boy. Oh God, there's a counter attack. If everyone sees big, tough footballers standing up to it, then you know, the young'uns in the stand will, will think, OK, that's, that's OK as well. And if they're stopping the game and not, not happy about hearing something, well, why can't I do that at school or in other, in other parts of society? So we've still got a long way to go, but we're certainly making good strides, that's what I'd say. OK, chat, just go in the car, let's go, let's go, let's go. Now we're at the final push, the business end of the season. It's going to be exciting. We've got a, a huge month coming up. Quick thing, casuals, yes, Saturday. Now we understand the pitch is going to be tricky. If they want to sit back and bank with five, we'll control it deep in deep areas, right? If they want to come and have a dust up, we'll have a dust up. That's it. We're going three versus three, let's have it. You look your man in the eye, we'll have it with them, that's it. We're fourth in the league. We're going for promotion. Crowds are up, feel good factors there. So I'll back these boys behind me against anyone. So yeah, no, it should be exciting. Happy? Charlie happy? Mindy happy? Let's go, boys. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> in a goalless draw here today. Lewis will now face their fierce rivals Worthing at home next week, needing the three points to keep their promotion hopes alive. Ready for the biggest game in history? One, 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 one. 
think women's football has progressed dramatically the last few years. I still think it has a long way to go. Yeah, it's getting better, slowly, slow progress. So hopefully the generation after us will reap the rewards. For me, it was like a ray of shining light in 2017, taking this decision to split revenue equally between the men's side and the women's side. That's radical. It shouldn't be radical, but it is. And of course, for people in the town, yeah, it was different and it was new, but it was still probably part of this psyche of doing things a bit differently and not just accepting the status quo. I think a lot of people see it as like a quality FC, so the money's the same, which, yeah, is the case, but it's still, it's so much more than that. We play on the same pitch, we have the same kit. If something wants to be bought in the club, it's split 50-50. We have equal marketing budgets. Everything across the board is equal. So it's not just eliminating the pay gap, it's eliminating all gender disparities, which as women, it's nice to know that we are valued and our performance is valued equally to that of our male counterparts. When you talk to some of the directors now, they're a little bit embarrassed that it took them so long to introduce equality into the football club. It had already been in community ownership for about seven or eight years, I guess, by then. And so for them, sometimes they're like, oh, how did we run this ethical community club but not have equality at its core for so many years? Even though they were the first club in the world to do it, they still feel like they were too slow. In football, equality is not just about the finances. It's about a lot of other things as well and it all comes from the esteem and the respect given to women in football at the heart of football's culture. A lot of people get hung up on the fact that we have equal playing budgets and they'll challenge us about how long that can last and is it feasible and what if the men get promoted, what if the women get promoted. I know it's probably more difficult if a team like Chelsea are doing it with higher resources or there's a bigger gap, but like it's got to start somewhere and I think we're just proving that it can be done and if you're always thinking that the women come second, then that's how they're going to be in every aspect of society. As a really simple example, I was in the room while one of the directors was showing me images of the new kit for next season. I just said, hey, it looks great. Do the women have to wear white shorts? And in any other circumstance, that director would have said, well, yes, this is the kit. <laughs> it's done. Also, nobody would have asked a question because there wouldn't have been a woman in the room thinking, well, actually, do you know what? A lot of female players are not that comfortable playing if they've got white shorts on. And it was really simple. He said, no. What shorts should the women play in? I said, what, how about black? And so hardly anyone in the club has even noticed that the men's team and the women's team have a slightly different kit. Those are the kinds of decisions that I think people don't really think about, but it's so tiny but makes a, a huge impact on that sense that football is for all and the belonging in that inclusion, all those kind of buzzwords. This is the reality of it. We've got this little oasis at Lewis FC where we can begin to see what it feels like to have women very welcomed at matches, to have women gaining confidence from being paid the same as the men on the pitch, and men in our men's team, you know, waking up to the idea that they have a role to play in creating gender equality. We have this amazing slogan, if you like, which says that equality is a rising tide that lifts all our boats. Equality, you know, isn't taking away from the men, it's promoting both the men and the women, and it's, it's growing the pie. And if you look at Lewis, we've shown that it is sustainable, and it is, you know, something that can be accomplished because the, both the women and the men have done exceedingly better since equality. I'm one of the elected directors at Lewis FC, elected by all the owners around the world, and uh, my particular role is leading on our impact on the world. So the impact that football has on the wider world off the pitch. You all right, Ellie? Yeah. I never really liked football because it always seemed to be directed at men and boys when I was growing up. Little did I know that when I was actually growing up, the ban on women's football was still in place. It wasn't unbanned until 71. Mm -hmm. Nice to see you. See you. Perfect. Looking tired. Hello, you're right. That's a good shirt. Good. Yes, my friend Nick gave me this. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? So when the ban was lifted, women's game had nothing. No crowds were coming, girls thought they couldn't play football or didn't play football. People thought women's football was boring. Women were acclimatised to not going to football matches, not looking at football reports, etc. So it did an awful lot of damage. You've got a present for you both. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've got a present for you both in my bag because your mum told me that you were coming with uh, Ruby as well. And I just thought you might like this book because it's such a good such a good book. It's 
football does have a big influence on the world and women have been excluded from it now for so long. That's the amazing thing about what Lewis FC are doing. They're bringing those unwelcome women back into the dripping pan you know, as fans or encouraging them to play, making them part of that conversation again and giving them that culture back that was robbed, actually, from women for a long, long time. I grew up in Lewis. I went to yeah. a school that's next door. Yeah. I played football when I was in year five, but I kind of just had this big gap where I just thought that football wasn't really for me. Yeah. I think it was probably partly because my dad and my brothers were really into it and I just really felt like it was their thing. Yeah. And I just didn't know, I didn't think it was something I'd enjoy. But when yeah. I started to talk to the players and just talking to you as well, and seeing you do those amazing speeches about the Equality FC and all that, whatever thing is, it did actually really inspire me. I feel like the whole like world of football has opened up and completely changed my life. I mean, for me, like, there wasn't enough encouragement or representation for me to see that I could do football. Yeah. When I've started playing with my team, we've had like little girls like walking past with their dads, sort of like, like we actually had one particular case where this small girl was like at the gates watching us and going, I didn't know that girls were allowed to play football. And yeah. her dad was like, yeah, I can, we can, we, see, I told you, you yeah. can. She was like, okay, I'm going to start. And it was a real moment for us that like, yeah. we felt like, wow, even just us playing, it, we're becoming like, it's just like really hopeful for people who are younger than us. And I just think, oh wow, I wish I'd had that when I was younger. Please put your hands together for our under 14 Sussex Girls Challenge Champion. Just the more equality that can happen, mm. the more likely that the women's teams and women's football is going to elevate and become just yeah. something that everyone goes to watch, something that people can participate in if they want to, in whatever way they want to do. It just becomes a much more inclusive space. Football Absolutely. in general. Yeah, much more normalised. Yeah, definitely. I think we want people to know that this is a special place. This is a place where magic happens. This is a place where we can change culture. We're free to form our own agenda. And uh, we, want, we just want everyone to be at, at ease and happy. It's simple, really, but... It does feel like we can own that and we can make those changes ourselves because we own the football club together, <laughs> collectively. This ownership model, this community ownership model, is really important for a number of reasons. Obviously, it provides us with this financial boost. These are people that are literally putting their money into the club and saying, this is how we want to run a club. And then the other reason is that we're very outspoken on certain issues in football. The fact that we have these owners that are signing up, backing our positions, we've become more powerful because it's not just one club and it's not just a small number of people in a club with this opinion. We are literally growing a movement around us that say that is the type of football that we want. I first read about Lewis in the newspapers and of course being a massive supporter of women's sport and women in sport, it appealed to me on many levels what it was that they were trying to do as a community club. My encounter with Lewis Football Club was very interesting actually. Karen Dobres came to the restaurant. We were talking and I really thought, what a marvellous idea. I first interviewed Maggie Murphy for my podcast a couple of years ago, The Game Changers, and that's how I first really heard about Lewis and, and knew about them. It was very much the equality side of things that drew me to them. It was just so clear that everybody was in it together. So I thought, right, I'll go off and be one of those uh, shareholders. So I did it, filled it in online, and there you go, I'm a shareholder of Lewis FC. You know, to make a difference in life, you have to be different. But to, to be different is difficult. So you need to have followers and you have to have people that believe in you and your dream. We have now over 2,000 owners around the world. Ultimately, the dream is to be the most owned club in the world. That sounds a little bit crazy because we'd have to hit the same numbers as Barcelona, but I don't see why we can't get there. We're only a few short. If we did become the most owned club in the country, we wouldn't be reliant on sponsors or partners because we'd purely be able to run through our owners, through the people that believe in the vision. There's something quite freeing about that and exciting. To people across sport, people do know of Lewis and they hear what Lewis is doing. So I think just demonstrating what can be done with some investment and a real commitment from the club. For me, it's exciting. It's the impact they're having in football, but more broadly across all of sport. The ethos of the Lewis Football Club to have a, an equality will bring a better feeling or better understanding for the 
for the public at large of what football stands for and how we should receive it and appreciate it. I think it's really important that that sports learn from each other, you know, and that we work together because we're all trying to do the same thing. We're trying to get more people active, we're trying to involve communities. And the more expertise you can have around you, the more chance you have of creating that great product for a very diverse, inclusive community. It's really vital we are good on the pitch. If we are not good on the pitch, then we just look like a, a club that's tried to do something, but it didn't quite work because the results aren't so good. And that's nice, you're nice and ethical, but not very good football. OK, we don't have all the money of the Premier League clubs, but once again, it just goes back to the message that to be the best, it's not all about money and resources. It's about the human beings and do you care? And are you willing to take the time and energy to develop every single person in your club? Every match you play, you're trying to create a bigger platform for these messages that can really reach hearts and minds through the power of football. The more successful we are, the more people will look and be like, oh, Lewis, this is their message, these are their values, that's really cool. Game against Reading, Conti Cup, really big game for us. WSL team, big dogs. Those times in football where you really think, like, is this all worth it? And when people are getting injured and maybe you haven't won a load of games at that time, like, something happens in football that just reminds you why you love the game. And I think Reading was that moment for our team. And it just, yeah, definitely going to be one of the highlights of the season, for sure. So we're underway on a cold night here at the Dripping Pan. Lewis with an early chance here, not to be this time. All the possession still with Lewis here though. A heavy challenge from Reading there and the free kick has been awarded. It's in the box, might fall for Ellie Hack here, cleverly! Rianne cleverly grabs the opportunity and puts it past the keeper and cleverly celebrates in a style that only cleverly knows. Lewis now going to be desperate to hold on to this advantage. Reading are coming back at them strong. Into the box now for Reading. It's scrappy but it's crossed the line. Reading bring this game back to a draw. It's 1-1. A win tonight would mean everything for Lewis to show they are worthy of a place in the league above. This might be their final chance. So that's 1-1 at full time, forcing this Conti Cup match into a penalty shootout. Every time you see Lewis knock off one of the, the big dogs, I hope that we're giving hope to every club around the world who doesn't have that shiny badge and the billions of dollars to support them. And I hope we show them that the little guy can win. I think that we're now a little bit more aware of the mental strain that is placed on players at all levels, whether you're a grassroots player, whether you're a Premier League player. And I think the clubs are now realizing that they have a duty and an obligation, not just to try to reap the financial benefits of a really talented player, but to look after them as an individual as well. Certainly for us at Lewis, I think that we know that we won't be able to compete with the budgets of some of the other clubs that we're in the same competition with, but we can compete on culture and we can compete on the way that we treat and value the players. That's the way that we can choose to go into battle for some of the best players with some of the other clubs that might have all the facilities, but we've got, I don't know, maybe a bit more of the heart. That's what I'd like to think. 
in my day job, I work in mental health, I'm a psychotherapist and nurse, so I set it up looking to provide a, a space where people could uh, build relationships, really a, a sort of community and therapeutic space for anybody. Uh, and that was the point, was that it was for absolutely anybody. The poem is all about telling people why we want them to be here and what they're gonna do tonight and how they're part of it and how they matter because they have come along to be part of it. It's eight o'clock of the 3G now is a time for joy. Yay! We are a community who love to play football. Showing up matters and everyone is welcome here. The way that we play football, we try to embody a spirit of care and concern for each other. We are careful in the tackle. Stay on your feet and please avoid the needless fouls. It has got a very different culture and a, a set of very different conversations taking place. Winning is not everything. So let's run, work and play our best football. If you're old enough, you're yeah, good yeah. enough. I'm really proud to be part of this group of people and part of Lewis Football Club. I'm proud to be part of a, a culture that looks to challenge prejudice and inequality. It's a significant and meaningful thing for me and for the people in this team. Yeah, we all want to be part of it. We're where the winds of change are blowing, you know. We're with social purpose and that is actually what people want. You know, they want meaning with their football. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out what Mission Complete is. On paper, it sounds like, yep, get the women's team promoted into the WSL, get the men promoted to divisions. The obvious thing is to try to get the teams as high as they possibly can. The reason for that is to prove concept, prove that when you run a football club in an ethical way, with equality at its heart, that it can be good on the pitch as well as off the pitch. The mission is that what we're doing becomes completely ordinary. Almost every other club will be doing what we're doing. Loads of other clubs will be fan-owned or fan-controlled. Gender equality will be something people won't be able to don't talk about because won't be able to believe it never happened. But there are many clubs that are beginning to look at if they invest properly in their women's team, if they equally fund the marketing and the promotion, that can make a significant difference to the success of the entire club. Lewis is just ahead of the club. Lewis is just the pioneers of it all and just gone out there and done it when it wasn't cool. There has to be a realisation that the game doesn't have to look like the Premier League. It doesn't have to look like men's football. It can be completely different. It can be quirky. It can be in a tiny Sussex town. You can have one of the best teams in the country here. There's so many things that we can take on with the club. There's so many other issues to address. I want the club to be able to develop and grow. We have a series of kind of projects or missions that we're trying to do. We're trying to bring about equality of FA Cup prize money. And I think things have happened recently which have been very positive. Lewis are the pioneers, this is what they do, right? And everyone thought they were crazy and now all of a sudden in 10, 15 years time they're all going to be doing the same. So that, that, that's the legacy right there. So we've got one last game of the season. The women's side host Liverpool who've just recently crowned champions. It's been an amazing season with a lot of ups and downs. We did have a sellout which was 2,347 against Worthing for the men's team and it was the highest attendance in about 70 years in the club. The Liverpool game is expected to be a big one. We've had teams like Chelsea, Manchester United come before and the attendances have been high. So not only do we hope to break the record but also hopefully get a sellout on the women's side because that would massively prove a point for people doubting if equal pay is a, is a solution because we put equal resources between both the teams and to have a sellout on both the teams would be a massive, massive statement to everyone who's doubting us. At Lewis, you know, we're always equality. We're always trying to be better. We're trying to go against the norm. We're trying to fight for, you know, everything that's right. And when you go to these powerhouse clubs and like, for example, Chris, our Crystal Palace game wasn't streamed. That would never happen here at Lewis. At Liverpool, we travel, you know, 20 minutes outside of time to play at Transmere Rovers, which is, you know, it's not even a Liverpool ground. So it's it's great to play against these powerhouse teams, but at the same time, it's also disheartening to just to see, like, the way their women's team are treated. 
A small club like us shouldn't be playing Liverpool and Reading and all the clubs that we do play. And the only answer to it really is sexism. Any time they want, those big teams could put their hand in their pocket and put loads of resources into their women's team and win everything, right? But the fact that they're not is why Lewis is allowed to compete at the level we are at the moment. I think we've got a window of opportunity where we can get into the Super League and stay there until those other teams kind of wake up to the potential of women's football, economically and socially. There could be nothing more proud than to say your team is in the top league in the country, but I also think that the Women's Super League, if not this year, in the coming three years, will be the top league in the world. And if Lewis FC, this tiny little club in a tiny little community who's been striving to get partners and sponsors to buy into the bigger vision, it's not about what happens on the pitch this year, it's about the mission and the transformation we can make in the world in three years, five years, ten years. Sometimes I do get scared that everything could fall apart if the pace of change is such that you will have to be attached to a Premier League club in order to compete in the future. We don't have the luxury of time. I feel like Premier League clubs can put in a five-year plan or a ten-year plan and invest, invest, invest. We know that we might drown and that's why we have to act now. We have to be doing everything we possibly can. We're really trying to just be more consistent with our performances and I think first year being professional, that's only probably natural. To get a result against Liverpool would be great because it would also prove to a lot of people who doubt Lewis that we are, you know, a club to be reckoned with. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the FA Women's Championship League Race. happens partners and sponsors and fans they wait till you win you know what's really powerful go through the journey with these guys our responsibility as leaders in sport and clubs and federations and organizations is we're taking a human on a journey from whatever age through their life to make sure that they can go do something better as an athlete you have so much purpose and so much drive and oftentimes big values if you don't then go use them in life for the next generation then what is it all about the day I die and I end up on my pillow, I'm going to know that I did everything I could to make sure that the next generation had the next opportunity. When you're laying there and you're gone and people have to speak about you at your funeral, if all they say is you were a great athlete, you didn't do much for society, you didn't do much for humanity. There's not a lot of purpose in that. I want it to be really obvious and concrete that we did a good thing. I want to get the naysayers to understand that this isn't superficial. We should not be the only club doing this stuff. It has to go much wider, it has to go further, it has to be others. I truly hope that you'll join the journey with us. Not for Karen and I, but for the Paulas of the world and the women who are doing everything at 24 years old to survive, to be the best they can be day in and day out on the tiniest of resources without a complaint. It's just so important that football can do better and be better. Yeah, the town deserves it.
over my face, right? What do I say? Just be unclever, take one. Action.